Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the central dogma theory, and you actually read about this in the books in section 12, 3, if you did do the reading, and you've also seen a video on it on Wednesday um, that was related to the quick check if you did that as well. Um, so basically, the central dogma theory is what tells us how our DNA within our nucleus gets transcribed into RNA and then translated into actual protein. So the word dogma actually means um, principles or a set of instructions. So the central dogma theory is the set of instructions for how this happens. Okay. The first step of the central dogma theory is called transcription, and this is how our DNA um, gets coded into RNA. It's going to get transcribed into RNA. Okay. Transcription comes from the word transcribe, and to transcribe something means to copy it in another way. So if you're going to transcribe something, it just means that you're going to make a copy. You're not necessarily changing the information or uh, what um, that information is made of. So for example, if I had something that I had written down on a piece of paper, um, I could tran use transcription to transcribe it um, into a Word document on the computer. I haven't changed anything about the information. It's still the same information. It's just copied down in a different way. Okay, so why do we need to make a new copy? And the reason why we need to make a copy is because DNA cannot leave the nucleus. Our DNA, the information um, for everything that happens within all living things within our bodies is kept nice and um, safe inside the nucleus. So it doesn't leave the nucleus. So how are we going to get a message to the ribosome? And the ribosome is where the proteins are made. And the answer is um, that we're going to get a message to that ribosome through what's called messenger RNA. So we need to make a copy of the DNA and we need to make this copy as messenger RNA. Okay, so step one of transcription. Um, if you remember back from DNA replication, there was something called DNA polymerase that helped to make the new strands for DNA re replication. Here, instead of DNA polymerase, we have RNA polymerase. So RNA polymerase is going to come along. It's going to unwind the DNA like so. Okay, it unwinds the DNA. And then step two, that RNA polymerase is going to add nucleotides to make a messenger RNA. Just like the DNA polymerase was adding nucleotides to make a new strand of DNA, but in this case, it's making the RNA polymerase is making a strand of RNA. Okay, and this is how it goes. The exception to the base pair rule applies here. So if you remember, in DNA, A goes to T, um, T goes to A, C goes to G, and G goes to C. But here, you have U instead of T. So anytime uh, you see an A, you know that that's going to pair with a U. And it looks like this. Okay, so if you look at the strand that was just made, you'll see that it matches up with the top strand of that DNA. Um, starting off from the left side, you see G goes to C. C pairs with G, T pairs with A, C pairs with G, G pairs with C, and then finally you get that A, A pairs with U. So on messenger RNA, we don't have any T's, we have the U, we have uracil. Okay, step three is that that DNA is going to return to its double helix, which is just that twisted ladder form, and then the messenger RNA is actually going to leave the nucleus. So it's going to go bye-bye. Okay. So our RNA is able to leave the nucleus where the DNA can't, which is why we do transcription, why we need to make a copy. And then you can watch this video after. So let's just go ahead and skip over to the next step. Okay. So what do you think is going to happen next in the process? We just did transcription. We made a copy of our DNA information. 
Um, what will the mRNA do now that it's been created? It was created and it's left the nucleus. It's in the cytoplasm now, which is that jelly-filled liquid that um, fills up the rest of your cell. Okay, so we're moving on to part two, and you can add this information um, to the front page where we started off, part two of the central dogma theory, where that messenger RNA gets transform, uh, translated into protein is called translation. Translation, um, you probably already know to translate something means to write something in a different language. Okay, so if I were to translate these words, hey, what's up? What do you want to eat? I can translate that into a different language. I can translate that into Spanish. Hola, que tal? Que quieres comer? And here, though, I have I have changed the information a bit. Um, it's not just a copy that I made of this information. I changed the language, so it's in a different format, which is why we call it translation. Okay, so why would we need to translate the RNA that left the nucleus in order to get a protein? Um, when you did transcription from DNA to RNA, you weren't changing anything about what, what, what DNA and RNA are made of. Well, DNA and RNA are made up of nucleotides. So you're able to just make a copy because they're made up of the same things. But when it comes to turning an RNA into actual protein, the actual um, proteins that make up our tissues, that make up the flesh and blood of us, uh, that's not made of nucleotides. So RNA is made of nucleotides. Proteins are actually made of what's called amino acids, okay? These amino acids, um, there's quite a few of them. They have pretty long names. I won't um, expect you to memorize them. Whenever we do translation, I will give you a, uh, a code that will help you out, and I'll explain that later as well. Okay, but the reason why we need to translate it is because RNA is made up of something different. So we need to have a way to um, make that information that's nucleotides into information that's actually amino acids that make up, makes up our proteins. So this is how we do it. Okay. Uh, step one, we already had the mRNA leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome, which is in the cytoplasm. And the ribosome is just where our protein is proteins are made. So the ribosome is going to um, read the mRNA to add the amino acids to make the protein. And let's take this step by step. Okay, so step two, the ribosome looks for what's called the start signal. And the start signal is a codon AUG. And I'll explain what a codon is in a second. Okay, So the ribosome, you'll see it in the left-hand corner, it's not going to start doing anything until it hits that AUG start codon. And that start codon actually um, codes for a amino acid as well. And we'll get to that later. Okay, So the ribosome reads that RNA strand in triplets called codons. Okay? These codons um, are just the three letters and the three letters will code for an amino acid. So the ribosome is always going to read that information in threes starting at the start codon which is AUG. Okay, so the next one you see there it's reading is CUU. Another RNA called tRNA, and that just means transfer RNA, brings the correct amino acid to the ribosome by matching its anticodon with the messenger RNA's codon. I won't make you worry too much about the anticodons, but just know that everything has a code, and there's even a code for this transfer RNA to tell which amino acid it's giving to the ribosome to add on to this chain of amino acids that makes our protein. Okay, So you'll see it dropping off a protein there. The amino acids are going to connect, the ribosome is going to connect them to form a long chain called a protein. 
and we'll keep going along here you'll see different transfer RNAs bringing in those amino acids based on that three letter code and the names of the amino acids that you see there are actually just um, the three letters that they begin with and that's all we're, we'll use when we're using this code okay, the ribosome keeps going it's going to add on valine and then step six translation ends at what's called a stop codon and there are actually three different stop codons so UAA, UAG, or UGA if that ribosome hits any of those three um, those three letters that codon is going to tell that ribosome to stop creating um, this protein to stop adding amino acids Okay, so you see we hit a UAA right there, and the ribosome knows to stop. Now for the purposes of our class, we're going to count the stop as an amino acid. When, so when I ask you how many amino acids does this uh, particular protein have, it's actually going to be five. So leucine pro, um, glycine, valine, and then the stop. So we'd count five. Okay, and then the tRNA, and this is um, back up towards the top, the tRNA is like a taxi, and it's dropping off its passengers, and the passengers here are just the amino acids. So the tRNA's job is to, is to hold on to those amino acids until it needs to pair up and drop it off at the ribosome um, for it to be connected together like you see in the bottom left-hand corner to make our protein. So proteins are made of amino acids. Okay, and there we have our finished protein. Again, I said that this particular protein was made up of five amino acids because I'm going to count the stop codon. Okay. Um, now what I want you to do here is I want you to go back and write at least one question per, per box that's there. One, um, the empty boxes. Two is better. So the boxes on the left hand side, please write at least one question per box. I also want you to um, complete the summary. So make sure that you write at least one question per box and complete the summary. And um, before or after you do this, you can watch the videos that are posted on Edmodo. They're actually real time animations of transcription and translation um, happening within our bodies. So I'll actually have um, these videos posted. So just go over to Edmodo, take a look at them, make sure you write uh, one question for each box on the left-hand side and complete the summary. And then we're going to move on to actually doing translation, reading the code when, um, when we all come back together as a group.